You're listening to a Count Out Podcast. What's up and welcome everyone to Faces and Feels. I'm your bad friend Rafe Houston and today we're going to be looking at Night 5. G Wondering, Okada's short, short episode running down all the happenings of the G1 Climax 32, night by night. That's right. It's just me solo today. Your good friend Curtis Spears covered Night 4 and we're just trading in and out to get these out for you as quickly as possible. Man, I'm going to set the scene for you real quick. I am sitting in my recording studio in Perth, Western Australia. By that I mean my wardrobe. I can look out of the windows into the, the starry night and other apartments and even down to the river a little bit. I have a coward's strong zero in front of me. That's right, I say coward's because it's only 6%, not really a true strong zero. Anyone who's been to Japan knows this is a 9% beverage and it comes in a tall boy can. This is a tiny boy's can. Even though the size denotes that it would be short-like, it's not. It's the pants of strong zeros. Disappointed in it, but really after the day I've had, I'm quite relieved to drink it. So it's helping me get pumped for what was an awesome night of G1 action, July 24th, it was actually, I say night, it was afternoon for me when I watched it, Uh, and the entire thing kicked off with El Phantasmo defeating Yujiro Takahashi with the Thunder Kiss 86. Not only that, but he also took his woman. That's right. So, like, El Phantasmo's on a bit of a turn right now. He's changing into something else. He's changed into a heavyweight... uh, and even his moveset and stuff is changing as he slowly becomes more face-like and more popular. And in this one, yeah, he started flirting with Peter kind of like as the entire thing was going on. And then at the very end, she chooses to leave with him over Yujiro Takahashi, the pimp, and his friend Sho, who are both there. And they are distraught, and it's really funny. This was a great match. It was, even though I say Phantasmo was being a good guy, he did some really heelish stuff. Uh, but only because they made him and because he was better at it than them, you know. Uh, he's versing Yuji, and Yuji's really dominant in this match. Um, Sho comes out with the wrench, tries to interfere. It, it ends up being slid into the ring. Phantasmo picks it up. He doesn't hit Yuji with it. He drops it on the ground. He claps in the air and then drops to the ground, holding his eye and making it look like he has been hit by the wrench. The ref turns around, is shocked, is admonishing him, and then when the ref gets his back turn, Phantasmo comes to his knees and punches Yuji in the dick as hard as he can, <laughs> which is a heelish move, but everybody loved to see it because the House of Torture are evil and they suck. And then he got to the top rope. Well, actually, he 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 did a dive to the outside, which was a super facey move as well, did a big tope to the outside, hit the top rope, did the Thunder Kiss 86, took the win, took the woman, and got out of there. And it was a a great, fun match. I don't know whether Peter will be sticking around with Phantasmo, or I didn't get to see the after-match comments. I I think she was still with him. I don't think he dismissed her or anything like that. Actually, now I think about it, I think he was going to teach her or show her what ELP meant. So that's uh, very classy of him. Uh, but yeah, we'll see where it goes. We also had the fun time of um, my wife and I, Amy, were joking around like, you know, uh, that meme 
it's like a boyfriend walking his, with his girlfriend and he looks back and he's looking at the other girl and the girlfriend's hell angry. The guy she told you not to worry about, well, we <laughs> we knocked up one of those uh, with ELP in the front and then Peter looking back while a huge is distraught and uh, everybody seemed to like it. It was on the G1 Climax 32 hashtag and lots of people were sharing it and laughing about it, including ELP and Peter. Uh, so I feel pretty good about that. So it was super fun and we had a great time because of that match. So I can't wait to see what else is coming from ELP in this tournament and even for the future because he's, he's on a trajectory now, man. Um, after that, we had uh, Sonata defeating Tai Chi with an O'Connor roll. Um, it was a bit of a slow start, uh, but they were just peck-popping at each other over and over each time with the class, which is kind of stupid. And their sort of charisma and, um, I guess, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Chemistry with each other made for like quite an interesting match. You know, um, it starts off real funny, but then they work really well together. And in the end, Sonata manages to get that role and take Tai Chi out. I would have really liked Tai Chi to get the win there, but Sonata seeing it through. Um, after that, it was Jeff Cobb versus Bad Luck Fale with the like biggest tour of the islands I've ever seen in my life. Um, <laughs> even... Jeff Cobb was like holding his back and, you know, in in absolute destruction. I think uh, our buddy Josh from We Work Stiff was saying it was uh, the tour of the hernias, something like that, with some funny pun. Well done, Josh. Um, but, yeah, it, it was good. And you know what? Like, farlow has been really good in this tournament. Like, I think he gets a bit of a bad rap and people, you know, sometimes uh, will – think that he doesn't have much to offer. But again, this is a second match. I've been really entertained, and I think nobody is uh, dragging their feet in this tournament. Um, it was great fun, really hard hitting, and then, yeah, Jeff managing to get that huge tour of the islands uh, and pick up the win there. Uh, and then after that, it was my girlfriend, Hiroshi Tanahashi, defeating Tetsuya Naito with an inside cradle. And this was great. This was main event. New Japan Pro Wrestling at its best. Two of their biggest, you know, two of the pillars of New Japan Pro Wrestling uh, absolutely showing what they did best. The chemistry between these two is so awesome. Um, and then, like, just both of them pulling out all the stops, the destinos. Like, there were so many false finishes here where I, I thought, you know, Tanahashi was done. And then when Tanahashi pulls out that win, essentially, you know, rolling up, Tetsuya Naito, the way that he was, you know, winning matches like crazy not that long ago was really fun, really poetic. And even the ending, them like sitting sort of next to each other and Naito with that wry smile on his face, like, yeah, well, when you fucking got me, it, it was really good. Um, it was just super pleasant, super wholesome New Japan vibes that I absolutely love. And, I mean, I love Tanahashi winning. Um if you've listened to our New Japan Pro Wrestling uh, G1 Climax 32 preview, where Curtis and I ran down our best and worst case scenarios, I managed to go from Curtis not even thinking Tanahashi would do anything to basically laying out him winning the entire tournament as our best case scenario. I don't think that's going to happen. I still think Naito was going to win, but fuck, I'd be happy if it did. It would be so cool. Um, I would love to see... Tanahashi in the dome versus Jay reclaiming the title that Jay took from him. As I say, not on the cards, but God, it would make me so happy. Um, the entire night was so much fun. I can't recommend this one enough. It was super great time. Um, let's have a quick look at our standings on our pickums real quick. Um, I don't think uh, all of them were up and completed by the time Curtis ran down night four. So I will go ahead and give you the standings, including that. So uh, on Saturday the 23rd, Curtis called down uh, ZSJ, defeated uh, Hanare. Um, all of us got that correct uh, except for Travis. Uh, Yoshihashi um, lost to Shingo. All of us got that correct. Okada defeated Yano. All of us got that correct except for Mo. 
And then Ishii lost to Jay White. All of us got that correct except for Travis and Mo. And then on this event, um, El Fantasmo uh, defeating the pimp was everybody picked that but Travis. Uh, Sonata beating Tai Chi. Both Travis and I got that right. Everybody else got that wrong. Jeff Cobb defeating Fale. Everybody picked that one. And then Tanahashi defeating Naito. Uh, only Travis and Amy got that correct. So running all the way down to our bottom standings, we are currently sitting on myself on 13, Curtis on 11, reigning champion Travis on 9, Amy on 13, and Mo on 11. Next week, what are the matches? We have Great Khan versus Chase Owens, and I have picked Great Khan. Kenta versus Evil, and I've picked Evil. Tom Lawler versus Lance, and I've picked Tom Lawler. And then Finley versus Juice. Finn Juice explodes, and I have picked Finley. I don't know how that's going to go. We will see. Either way, it is going to be a lot of fun. The G1 Climax keeps on absolutely killing it. Um, so, yeah, tune in to Tuesday, July 26th to check out that night, and then Curtis's review will be up not long after that. Uh, in the meantime, remember to check us out online at Okada Shorts. Check me out online at Faces Fields Cast. Check out Curtis at El Destructo 83. Check out all the wonderful people that support our podcast at the Count Out Network at Count Out Pod. Check out the dude who made our entrance theme, Owen, uh, at Riff Your Pod. And most importantly, rate and subscribe. Listen or die. You can check us out at linktree slash Okada Shorts. That's L-I-N-K-T-R dot double E slash Okada Shorts. Uh, and that will give you all the links to all of those wonderful things so you can check us out online. I hope you've had fun with this quick bite-sized episode of Okada Shorts. And remember, keep it right, keep it tight, and most importantly, keep it short. This has been a Count Out Podcast. Hey guys, gals, and non-binary pals. It's Amanda Bones. And I'm Ashley. Of How to Talk to Your Friend About Wrestling, the podcast on the Count Out Wrestling Podcast Network. A weekly show where we talk about all of our favorite things. Babes, blood, and brutality. We also talk about other fun things. Like, is Kenny Omega finally too tan? And how much blood is too much blood? Because that looks like way too much blood. So join us on the adventure of teaching me, Amanda Bones, about wrestling.